Yeah, thank you very much. So, uh, hi everyone. Uh, I believe you've just uh, visited quite a lot of talks here already. I'm not able to show you a couple of uh, augmented reality with Oculus Rift or any kind of robots uh, because we're like uh, quite boring in JetBrains, we're doing tools for developers. Uh, so we don't have like uh, cool and expressive stuff, but we have cool and expressive tools. So, and actually I'm going here to talk about the C++ because uh, when the or organizers asked us about some kind of a poetic talk, we think like for me as a C++ developer, what could be more poetic than a C++? Mm -hmm. And so because uh, this year is a C++ year for JetBrains, we think that uh, it would be like a good reason to talk about it here and something about uh, how it came to us and some things about the backstage. So the first question just to the audience, who actually uh, heard about JetBrains at least something here? Cool, and who, who is actually using the tools? Yeah, that's great. <laughs> actually like the biggest part of the audience. So um, probably then uh, maybe you're like uh, aware of some names on this uh, picture. Actually, this is the timeline for the company. We are 15 years already, so uh, we're not like a very young company already. <laughs> and we have an impressive number of tools. And we even have a couple of offices around the world. So you can see that here on this timeline, we started in year 2000. Actually, the 1st of February is the official birthday for the company. We were founded in uh, Czech Republic in Prague, though the co-founders are all from Russia, and so the biggest office we have in St. Petersburg, that is R&D and developer office, and the second biggest uh, R&D office is here in Munich, actually. Uh, so we have a couple of more, like in <coughs> Boston and in Moscow, and in Prague it's mostly the sales team office there. <coughs> so uh, we have quite a lot of tools, but uh, that all story actually started with a tool called IntelliJ Renamer. I don't know if anyone have heard about it, but that was actually the first name for IntelliJ ID because that was the IntelliJ ID in the very, very beginning. So in year 2000, we started the, uh, it was done in two parts. It was a plugin for JBuilder and what it was a separate uh, cross-platform uh, ID called IntelliJ Renamer. And what it can done, what it can do actually, it can cope with the Java code and it can do the rename refactoring on packages, classes, methods, whatever. Uh, and also there were some fine usages and some kind of basic stuff that we could introduce there. So, and from that point, right now, we've got uh, nearly eight IDEs. It's even more because there are some uh, additions available. So for example, for IntelliJ ID, we have an ultimate version and we have a community version. For PyCharm, the, that is our Python ID, we have even more. We have the new educational edition, uh, came up just less than a year ago, and it's a special tool for those who are starting learning the Python language. You can actually create a Python course there and provide it to the students or to those who are going to learn the language. And actually, there are a couple of new IDEs and tools uh, that were released during the last year or that are going to be released uh, soon, so it's I can't even just uh, find out if it's eight IDs or it's even more already. Uh, so we also have a bit more than IDs. We have our own language that is Kotlin. Uh, we have a DSL workbench called MPS. We have a very new tool for code review and repository browsing and it's called AppSource. And what we were like trying to do there is not just to provide the code review ability to you, but uh, to have a uh, repository browsing tool so that you can like watch and read the code in a browser with all the abilities you have in our IDE. So all this uh, code navigation, all this uh, code analysis, so all the smart stuff working there. So uh, we've released the version 2.0 just recently, so it's still quite new. And we have also agile management tool and an issue tracker called Utrack and a uh, tool for a continuous integration server called Team City. So you see here we have like a big family and uh, that all this family started with just Dalji Renamer in year 2000. So um, let me talk a little bit about uh, what, we're, what we're trying to achieve in our tools and how that all started for you to understand why actually nearly every C++ developer asked JetBrains when we're going to make a C++ IDE. 
And so that happened just because when we released the IntelliJ IDEA, uh, the version 1.0 in June in 2001, uh, so we've added uh, some nice uh, refactorings there, and actually it was the first implementation of extract method refactoring for Java, and because of this fact, the Martin Fowler actually mentioned us on his refactoring.com site. And so what we're trying to achieve is uh, we are trying to help developers be more productive in terms that we are trying to cope with the routine job. So we're trying to do as much as we can automatically in the IDE so the developer actually can create ideas. He can focus, like he or she can focus on some uh, more up-level ideas, can just think in general, and all the basic and mundane tasks are just left to the IDE. So, and some people say that we're cooking parsers for breakfast, and maybe that's because we have nearly an ID for every like famous programming language existing in the world, like for Ruby, for Python, for PHP, for C Sharp. But it's not only about the parsing the code, and not about highlighting the code correctly. It's more about these uh, uh, code generation features, about these code refactoring features, about the code analysis working on the fly, and in terms of code analysis, for us, the most important thing is just not to analyze and highlight the error for you, but mostly to show you a quick fix. Because it's nice when you have an error, but it's better when you have a way to fix it automatically. Uh, so actually, we came even with more. So we have a lot of tools on board of our IDEs. We have some kind of integration with uh, version control systems, with issue trackers, with whatever we want there to have. So, and there is some kind of a nice example about cooking parsers for breakfast that actually happened last year. And this is the Swift story. Because uh, we have an IDE called App Code, and it was mainly the IDE for Objective-C language. Uh, it was an IDE for writing applications for iOS and OS X, so for Macs. And it was mainly the Objective-C, there was a C and C++, I will be talking about it like a slide later, but still mainly it was an Objective-C IDE. And then boom, in June last year, Apple started the VVD WWDC and showed the Swift. So we don't have any kind of collaboration with Swift, so we learned about the language with you all together the 2nd of June. And uh, after finishing re like reading the release notes, in a week we came up with an update for the app code that actually supports the basic Swift uh, editing. So it was just very basic. It was highlighting all the like language structures and some like placing matching braces or something like that. So it was not very smart in terms of our smart tools like they were usual, but this was just one week we spent on it. And in half a year, we've uh, issued actually, we started the Earl Access program for the app code with more profound support for Swift. And we actually managed to have the rename refactoring there because just for you to understand, the Xcode still doesn't have any refactoring on Swift code at all. So even with the version like shown less than a week ago, they do not have anything. You show, when you try to refactor the code on Swift, C or C++ and Xcode, you get this pretty nice screenshot that the, like, the refactoring is available, I believe, in C they are, so for C and Objective-C. So for Swift, they do not have anything. And like, I do not understand how we can like, develop without the rename refactoring. It's like some kind of the basic thing we usually use. So we did it, and we tried to provide more. So actually, we started uh, a couple of weeks ago another EAP program for the next release, and we're going to have some code generation features. And of course, we're going now to look at the Swift uh, 2.0. Apple, as usual, come, comes with surprises for us, but we just get used to it. But I'm talking here about the app code uh, because of uh, one more reason. Uh, as I said before, uh, apart from the Objective-C, there were C and C++ in app code. And actually, that was the place uh, where the C and C++ started for us. So it was exactly the app code. So uh, looking at the app code, we started it as a completely just an Objective-C IDE in year 2011. Uh, in the beginning of the year, we started the Earl Access program, so uh, this is actually the free builds that we are trying to give developers to evaluate, to test the features, to see if they like, uh, like it or not, to provide the feature requests for us, the bu bug uh, reports or whatever. 
And so we, we were quite naive at the time. We've heard that we could manage with it just uh, without a proper parser for C++ or C language. We've heard that Objective-C is some kind of an easy extension for C language and we can cope with it without providing a proper parser for C++ language. And we were that naive for a couple of months until we finally find out that we have macroses. And after that, the people started coming with the Objective-C++ requests. And as you know, the Objective-C++ is actually Objective-C and C++ classes. So we understand that we need somehow to cope with C++ classes in, objective, uh, in app code because of the Objective-C++ language. And with that understanding, we actually started the very, very basic C++ support in app code uh, in, in that year, 2011. So if to dig in our app code blog, I actually find this uh, nice quote from our CIO. Uh, and that's quite true. So we were not expecting that at all. But somehow it happened that we started with C++. Uh, so after like uh, more than 10 years writing developer tools, we find out ourselves doing a C++. Um, but still, that was very basic. So that was some completion, that was some code resolve on a very basic level uh, and some highlighting. So uh, coming forward with the app code, so we released the version 1.0 and then a couple of uh, minor versions like 1.5 and 1.6. And still the C++ was very basic because we were not pushing it forward. We were not trying to follow the standard, like to parse it properly, not doing that, that, that things a lot, still thinking that we can cope somehow without that. <laughs> uh, so we have to introduce uh, some C++11 support, then came the templates, then came the implement and override uh, feature for code generation, then came the support for lib C++. But what happened next is a bit more important step. So in app code uh, 2.5 in year 2014, we've actually first of all uh, bundled the support for Google test framework. That is actually the major testing framework for C++. And actually we started the uh, fantastic and big rework inside of app code. What has happened at that time actually, if like uh, coming to a, a bit of the backstage, uh, there were two guys in the team, so uh, one of them decided like to do the C++ properly uh, because at that point we understood that we have to do it somehow, we have to start. So he decided to, uh, to improve the, uh, the C++ support that were existing at the time in AppCode to follow the standard more closer, to make it more proper. Uh, but uh, here his main goal was actually not to break the Objective-C support because the app code was at, on the level of the version 2.5 and it was a uh, quite mature ID with a lot of features for iOS developers and we couldn't just uh, make it like completely break everything. We couldn't afford it. So he started like reworking some parts, trying not to break the things uh, like greatly and at that point we've actually got a couple of refactorings for C++ in AppCode uh, 2.5 but also at that time another person from the team, uh, another team member, he actually decided to start the C++ parser from scratch. He had actually a completely different idea and a completely different architecture in mind. I will be talking about these two architectures today as well. So he actually decided to move to the project called ReSharper, that is our plugin for Visual Studio, and to start the C++ support in ReSharper. And so till that day, so till now, we still have two ways of C++ and JetBrains. We're still uh, undecided about which one was the better choice and still, we are still continue doing it two times and still comparing the, the ways. So that happened at exactly that time. So, and actually after uh, starting this rework in app code and after the, uh, we find out that the support is became uh, like uh, better and better and more correct and without, and with many refactorings and code analysis, actually very important thing that happened here, the guy who started the uh, C++ rework in app code, he's actually very cool at data flow analysis. So he has, he has some scientific uh, backgrounds in this data flow analysis. And what he's actually done, he, 
uh, prepared the whole bunch of data flow analysis in AppCode for C++ so that we can actually detect, for example, the unreachable code that can be detected only if you just go through the actual values or the variables. So you can't understand it with some kind of the help of the compiler. You need to actually see how the variable values go through your code and then to get that, oh, okay, here is the unreachable code. And that's actually what he, what he did for us. So, and like thinking at that point, we decided that maybe it's a good idea to start a C++ ID because we already have uh, quite a lot of things done. We have C++ refactorings, we have C++ code analysis, and we started, about, started thinking about the proper parser for C++. And so we've decided to make a very cute announcement on the April 1st in the year 2014. Uh, like in the usual list of news that we usually publish for April 1st, we've just added one small news about C++ ID. And it was like a huge reaction in the community. Like it was a bunch of comments there, a lot of tweets and so many things. And I, I know that some people still believe that we started the C++ ID only because of these big reactions. So like they think that uh, it was a joke before, but we were just convinced after the 1st of April. That's actually not true, but I like the story. So let them think in that way, why not? Um, so yeah, like on the next day, on the April 2, we have to confirm actually that yes, we're going to do the C++ ID. And so that year we started two surveys on our site. So Actually, that was quite a new thing for JetBrains because usually we have the public Early Access program uh, that allows everyone just to download the build and try. But with C++, we understood that we have some very fresh product that is not ready for the whole community yet and even not ready for the official Early Access program. So uh, we decided to do some kind of a private preview. So what that meant for us, so we actually started two surveys on AppCode side and on WeSharper side and just ask people what tools they use, uh, what they prefer, what libraries, what frameworks, what area they are working on, uh, in with a C++, what is the usual size of code base for them, so, and like all these type of questions. So after collecting this information, we actually selected a group of people to start the private preview with. So uh, mostly because uh, we were starting with a particular toolchain set. Uh, I will like tell a, a bit later about how, how we find out what, what it will be. So, and we have to limit it like the number of people to that uh, tool set to like a num uh, how big their code base is because we were understanding that uh, maybe the fresh build is not ready for the big code base. So, and with all that reasons uh, in mind, so we started uh, the private uh, previews in the year 2014, uh, so in winter for both ReSharper and ReSharper C++ and the C line. Uh, so for C line, first of all, it was a group of uh, like 200 people, so not quite big, uh, but uh, in six months it grows uh, up to 3,000 people. So actually we've collected something around uh, 5,000 uh, people in total who were willing to try the, either the ReSharper C++ or the C line. So, but we started with a very small and targeted group, the group that fitted to all our tool chains because we actually need people not to like play on a simple project, but like to load their real projects to the tool and to provide the feedback to us. So we were, uh, the, like the criteria were quite tough and I know that a lot of people were just like complaining and asking us uh, when I would like, so I would like to get the private preview sent it to me and we were refusing actually because we were understanding that uh, for them it won't work correctly and so our main goal was just to get a proper feedback. So we run, run for private preview for six months and in September last year we started the public preview and actually run it for seven months. And with the public preview, we've got uh, an impressive uh, 17,000 uh, active users per month, uh, like running the C line. And in total, for the seven months of public preview, we've got uh, 140,000 uh, 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 40, downloads. And the most impressive fact actually came after the release in April because. Uh, we've got like uh, 1,000 lessons sold in two weeks 
And why it's so surprising for us, because you know that we have a free evaluation for all our tools. So when the tool is like released, you can download it and use it for free for one month. So it's like a completely full featured tool. You just don't need the license. You have an evaluation license for this one month. And the people believe in the C line so strongly that they just came and bought the license. And we were all like really surprised because we're not expecting that. So like the sales department were thinking that they will be like uh, doing nothing for maybe a month or so, but still. One big company or? No, it was uh, <laughs> quite a lot of people. Actually, during the first uh, two weeks, mostly the personal license was sold. So the companies, uh, the, uh, they were coming a little bit later because the company usually, how they do, uh, they usually buy one license, try it for a long period, and if they like, then they came for a bigger pack. So here it was like the usual thing, but uh, with personal license, it was like a big boom there. So, uh, yes, actually, uh, I said that we were selecting some kind of the tools for the uh, starting the version one, but we actually did a bigger job. So we have um, quite a big research department in JetBrains, who is actually trying to provide us with researches on markets, on tools, on languages, on technologies. So while, while we are starting a new tool, we usually already know about the market quite a lot. So we know what is our market about, so what they use, what they will need, so with what request they actually will come to us. And so we did uh, this C++ research. So uh, from the market point of view, uh, we find out uh, the number of uh, we, like uh, four and a half million of C++ developers in the world. To compare with other languages, it's nine million for Java and something around two to three million for Python, I believe. Uh, so the top areas were quite expected. So it was the financial market, it was embedded in telecoms, and it was games. We were very happy with these markets because we have a developer advocate in JetBrains who is like responsible for the whole C++ stuff in the company. And he is actually doing the financial things like tradings and uh, like uh, high performance computations apart from the work in JetBrains. So he is really knowing what, uh, what to show these people. And I spent like eight years in in embedded and telecom, so I also know about it. The only thing we have maybe some problems with today is the games, because we have only one true gamer in the team. Uh, but I suppose that maybe we'll, I don't know, find someone, <laughs> hunt someone uh, who can do it better than we. Uh, so the languages that are com were coming in addition uh, to C++ and were quite popular uh, were like Java, C Sharp, uh, JavaScript, and Python. And that also sounds quite reasonable for us. Uh, so we actually have the JavaScript already on board of C-Line because uh, it's a building plugin uh, that we have since the very, very first version. And we're going to have Python uh, on board, uh, hopefully quite soon. So yeah, and concerning the tools, uh, the platform distribution actually a little bit varies depending on the source uh, of the data, like for Stack Overflow researches or the Reddit researches or some job uh, uh, vacancies analysis. So, but still, it looks uh, nearly like that. So there is about 40% uh, of the community on Windows, like 40% community on uh, Linux, and something around 20% on Mac. Uh, about the tools, uh, so it was GCC and Clank as a compiler, DDB7 uh, or LDB as a debugger and CMake. Of course, for Mac, it was mostly Clank, LDB and CMake, but still the GCC and GDB were also very close uh, on the graphs for macOS. So we decided to start with uh, GDB7, uh, GCC and Clank compilers because they are very similar actually and the CMake. So we are going to have the LLDB support hopefully just in the version 1.1 of C-Line because this is also what, like one of the most popular debugger and especially for Mac users. But still we started with this tool chain and this tool chain were a kind of limitation while selecting the group for private preview and I believe it still remains the limitation for the people uh, who are going to use the tool and like many of them complaining that we have only CMake support. But for us, actually the selection of the build tool was not about like how we will go to build the project in C line, but the build system for us is more about the project structure. So we actually use the CMake as a project structure 
for the whole project in CLINE. And what we do with the CMake, we actually take all the information from the CMake files, like what standard for C++ uh, the developer is going to use, what is the uh, standard library he's going to use, where is the headers, uh, header files allocated, so what are the include paths. Uh, I don't know, what are the variables, whatever else is written in the CMake file. And actually we use that while resolving the code. So we have the fully correct resolve in the editor uh, in terms of uh, it takes uh, uh, all, all the information from CMake and uses it for this resolve and parsing. So that's why we actually couldn't switch the build system like in no time. We have to do some uh, more work for supporting this and still we are going to provide more uh, IntelliSense in CMake language to help those who like maybe do not like the CMake uh, too much but I know maybe uh, the second popular build system is auto tools and make files uh, but uh, we for sure are going to have it a bit later maybe I don't know in a year or how it goes uh, for that I don't know but still the CMake <coughs> is uh, actually quite popular right now so and a lot of people are using it and actually porting the projects from other tools to CMake. So, and the surprising fact that we've got from this market research was actually the uh, distribution on uh, Windows, because we actually find out that less, we thought that the market on Windows will be uh, like uh, fully given to the ReSharper C++ tool and the, like the Visual Studio with ReSharper <coughs> plugin, but we were surprised that uh, it's not even the uh, half of the audience on Windows using the Visual Studio, so it's less than 50%. And actually, the uh, distribution between uh, GCC and Microsoft compiler is nearly similar. It's like 35% <coughs> per each and with some other additions there. So there is Intel compiler and some more. So uh, with that, we understand actually that the Windows audience will be also coming to us as well, not only to ReSharper C++. And what we see right now with like the data from May from our active users that we've got is that uh, we have um, like uh, around 10,000 active users on Windows and about 10,000 active users on Linux and a bit less uh, on Mac OS. So the users on Windows are quite active and come into Celine and that was like um, some kind of surprise for us. <laughs> so um, I know about the parser and C++. So we've actually started doing this twice and that was mainly because um, C-Line is based on IntelliJ platform, that is like the platform born after our uh, years of uh, making IntelliJ ID, we make this open source platform and we build quite a lot of tools on top of this platform. So all our small IDs are mostly built on this platform. And the ReSharper is quite another story. It's a plugin for Visual Studio. And so ReSharper C++ is like another product there. And the architecture for these platforms are completely different, actually. And the point is here that what you need in the editor to apply all the smart features that we have, you actually need first uh, to parse the code, to build the abstract syntax tree, and then to run some resolve above it. But with C++, it goes in that way. You like looking at the code and understanding that it's syntaxly it's like the same, but it means different things. You can't parse C++ without actual resolving. The actual example that I really like is maybe the second one, like one template and one binary expression. They look completely the same, but they mean different things. And that is the biggest problem with C++. You just can't parse without understanding what is it there. So you can't uh, like write a proper parser without somehow resolving at least any parts of the code. And here we decided to do it actually in two different ways. And mostly because, um, yeah, we were a little bit blind like this <laughs> cute animal. Like because um, the problem is that in platform that is IntelliJ platform, uh, like and 
actually in all our tools. What we have, apart from the parsing the code and building like the refactorings, we have also the thing called type assist. That actually, while you are typing the code in the editor, at that very moment, some things happening in the background, like you have some uh, closing bra braces appearing. You have uh, the most important thing is maybe the code formatting that is happening automatically and it's based on the rules you've like configured in the settings. But it's happening like when you press the enter, the whole thing got like reformatted according to these rules. And uh, to do these things, we actually need to understand what is written there, what you are actually typing there. And we can't let you like wait for ages, like, you know, type the enter, wait for two minutes, and then comes the code formatting. No one will be waiting for it. This won't happen. Uh, so, and here we did it uh, like in two different ways. Uh, in platform, because uh, all this type assisting is really using all this parser information, uh, we actually did the parsers with uh, parser with predictions. So we're trying not to do the complete resolve. Uh, we're trying to predict what is there. And in ReSharper, uh, because they have the asynchronous parser and they can like allow, like say, okay, parse the code and I will go forward, but they have to do this type assist with predictions. So anyway, you have to do some predictions at some stage and it actually depends. And we're still not sure which way is better because both ways has some problems. We have uh, a big bunch of C++ language tests that we are running continuously for ReSharper C++ and uh, C line. And uh, our developers are working on these tests, like trying to, yeah, sure. Uh, do you know how Microsoft does it? Sorry, who? Do, do you know how Microsoft does it? Uh, so actually, I don't know how the Microsoft compiler, but uh, I believe that most compilers do it in the way the actually how the Clank uh, does it, and I believe the GCC also uh, does it the same way right now. But about the GCC, I'm not sure because the GCC started with the predictions in parser, but later I believe they have rewritten the complete thing. Like in Clank, they have the parser with uh, this result thing, like the ReSharper does. So they actually resolving with uh, like parsing the code and building some resolve entities at the same time. So this is how the Clank works actually and I believe the GCC should be working that way right now at least the latest versions. And about the Microsoft I just don't know actually. So uh, the problem is that uh, we can't afford the parser with building the resolve entities with C line right now because there is the synchronous architecture and uh, with that limitations we started in two ways. And I can say, I actually can't say that uh, some way is uh, better or worse uh, than other one because we have the results for the tests. They have both have some problems and we are still working on them. So hopefully we'll come with some solutions sooner or later and understand what is working uh, better for us and where we need to switch. And actually there is um, another way there. So um, there is Clank. And there should be some kind of very reasonable question here why we're not using the Clank. Because it has uh, quite a big infrastructure ready now for the using the IDEs. But the problem was here first that when we started the C++ and app code, the Clank was also very young. So we were not, uh, we just didn't want to rely on some other tool release cycle when it's so young and so changing completely. And uh, so maybe if we are starting now, that will be the better choice, but at that time it was not like that. The other thing is that uh, actually in our tools we're working with the, working with the non-full uh, syntax models. That means that even if you have the code that is not compiled correctly, we try to do our best to make the proper refactorings on this code, to make the code analysis, try to suggest you what maybe you were thinking about and writing, should rewrite this place in that way. So, and to have it, we need the parser that is not just stopping where the something, some problem has happened. Uh, it can be even a very big problem. They, maybe I'm like missing the part of my code there, but we need a parser that will try to do his best actually and parse the code and uh, will do something with your code and try to suggest you some solutions. The other things with Clang is that actually, the thing that they are actually solving it right now, but uh, when it appeared, it was not completely ready for the IDE use because what we want to do, we need to do some extra caching, some extra things, and 
Planck are uh, happily is moving towards these things right now. So maybe in a couple of years, they will be very cool for using in IDEs with all these uh, abilities. And the last thing here is that actually we have uh, so-called language injections when you can uh, actually use another language in a string literals. For example, you have the SQL request in a string or you have some kind of a CSS style or JavaScript uh, string. And uh, you can like switch on the language injection and like the IDE will parse the string following the rules of that language. So it actually won't be just a string for the IDE, it will be like a complete SQL request, for example. And for all these things, uh, when starting, we understood that we need to write our parse. That's mainly the reasons we do these parsers ourselves for so many years, because we have quite a lot of things happening around the parser. We, just, we don't need just the uh, correct code on some language be parsed. We need some more. And because of that reasons, we couldn't move completely to like the tools that are ready and they are on the market. But I'm still not sure about the Clunk. The Clunk is like evaluating greatly and moving towards the IDE usages. So many, many C++ IDEs rely now on Clunk. And maybe we'll like uh, consider that way as well. So we have uh, actually two options uh, happening inside the team and one extra option that we can still try. And so the time will show how it goes actually <laughs> and where we are. So uh, that's mainly it. I would like to share about the C++ in JetBrains, so about our story. So if you have any questions, I will be glad to answer. Yeah, sure. Uh, do you have or are you planning support for template meta programming too? Uh, actually, uh, it depends on what you mean because we have the template supported. So there are some problems with them. Uh, so at least I know about a couple of tickets in the U track <laughs> for the C line, but uh, there are a lot of things that are working correctly for the templates. So we have a big projects that we're testing on with templates that are working absolutely correct. So uh, the problems that are there, they're just the usual problems that we have with the parser. Actually, I was referring to really the programming style. Like um, yeah, so with that, uh, we're on a very early stage, so <laughs> right now we only have what we have. So maybe we will. So we, you know, we have so many things happening around. It's like such a cool time when you're starting a new tool and you have a lot of ways, frameworks, and uh, like programming uh, concepts that you can follow and implement. So yeah, why not? Sorry, what, what? The back-end systems, you know, in other IDs. Um, I'm not sure what you're talking about, actually. Uh, for example, uh, uh, the Java IDE, you can extend by external plugins. Ah, you mean the plugins. Yeah, for sure, yes. Uh, just because the C-Line is built on the IntelliJ platform, uh, actually, the API for the plugins is the same for every ID <coughs> built on top of the platform. So yeah, you can write, like, uh, write your plugin for a C line just in the way you write it for IntelliJ ID or PyCharm or PHP. There are actually quite a lot of plugins already available for C line uh, because they just were made available somehow automatically, just like checking the model is there. So some of them are working pretty nice, like the Go plugin is working uh, there mostly. So. And I even saw a guy build, who built uh, a CMake project with Go and like loaded to the C line and worked successfully there. There is some things working, even even the debugger is working correctly. So he's, he was pretty pretty happy sharing with us this news. But uh, some plugins are not working because the offers like because this is the first tools plugins. Quite a lot of them are in the repository. The offers were like not considered in the C line, so they may be available but not working properly. But uh, yeah. There are like a bunch of them, maybe a couple of hundreds. Yeah. One more question. Does uh, C line understand Microsoft Visual Studio project structure and setup? Uh, no. So uh, right now, C line uh, understands only CMake project structure. And so we uh, actually do not consider the Microsoft project structure right now at that stage at all because we have ReSharper. And we don't see much sense like implementing it twice because we have the ReSharper C++. And the people who are like stuck to Microsoft project, they are mostly stuck to the compiler and the whole environment. And it's better to like use the ReSharper C++ that supports a lot of things uh, that are specific for Windows, like a lot of libraries. Another question for Gmail. 
Uh, do you make? Uh, yeah, I understand. So, um, you know, we have uh, in our tracker, we have something about, um, I don't know, maybe 500 uh, features requests. And a part of them are about various build systems and project structures. So uh, looking at them right now, as I remember, the top voted build system is the auto tools and make files. Uh, the second uh, is the QMake. Uh, I'm still not sure when we're going to have it. So maybe the auto tools will come somehow in a year or something about that. But actually what we're thinking about right now is maybe providing uh, some, high, some kind of API for the build systems, like the open API so that everyone can integrate its own custom build system maybe. But before we actually implement at least one more build system, we can't come up with the open API because otherwise it will be changing dramatically like every month and everyone will be just crying. <laughs> yeah. Both your products here, we Uh, actually, right now we don't have uh, such plans. We're thinking about providing the CLI plugin for IntelliJ IDEA. That is quite ob obvious thing, f thing for our tools. But uh, I don't think we have any other ideas in mind right now. Most probably it will come uh, like the C++ support. Most probably uh, sooner or later come to AppSource, that is the code review and browser, uh, like repository browsing tool, because uh, we have integrated their Java and there is JavaScript already, so probably the C++ will come there as well, so I don't know. But uh, concerning other tools, I don't think we will be doing the plugins for like other tools uh, that are not done in JetBrains, so maybe if someone would like to implement, we could help him, but <laughs> we don't have... Yes, that's true. You know, actually, because we provide a bit more than just the language parsing and uh, code refactorings and code analysis, so we try to build a tool that is like complete. So you have everything on board. You have the terminal on board. You have the version control systems built in. You have uh, like the issue tracker built in. You have the debugger built in with the UI support for the debugger and quite nice thing like the code completion in the debugger working while you are like typing the expression to evaluate and all these kind of things. So and uh, we are integrated them very deeply into the tool. So for us like cutting some parts and having them in other places. We've actually uh, did this once, so I think I can share this publicly because it was an official announcement from Google, you know, that they have an Android Studio built on top of IntelliJ platform. And actually right now, since the next version, the Android Studio has the C++ support for Android development built on top of c -Line actually. So we did it once, but <laughs> not sure why I'm going to repeat the experience. So, any more questions? Yeah? Uh, well, this is not a C++ question, more like a feature request for supporting another language. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, are there any plan plans at all at JetBrains for supporting Rust? Now that it's um, <laughs> you know, quite a popular feature request. <laughs> uh, there is a plugin in repository made by uh, some third party it's not even a company, I believe it's one developer doing that. So there is a plugin for us, it's very, very basic, so it's just the syntax highlighting and braces matching. Um, I don't know, we're not going to spend time on Rust right now. Maybe with the Rust release, more people will contribute to the plugin because I believe it's open sourced. Uh, we have uh, contributed a bit to the Go plugin that is also not uh, started in JetBrains, uh, but just because there, there was one developer in the company who was like a big fan of Go and he decided to do that. So maybe if there, there will be some kind of, if we find some developer who is fan of Rust inside of JetBrains, maybe, yeah, we'll be contributing to the plugin. But uh, at least it's not the high top uh, priority task for now for us. So we have a bit more problems to cope with first. <laughs>
Yeah. Yeah. And what is your strategy uh, regarding dependency management? I mean, this is still a huge problem in C++, and if that IDE would help me, then... Yeah, actually, uh, <laughs> concerning the dependency management, uh, just uh, recently, so we actually uh, got in touch with the B code guys. They are quite nice and they have a very nice tools. And what we've done, we've uh, actually helped uh, them and we worked together and uh, they provided the uh, command line option to generate the layout for C line so that you can like generate the project uh, with the B code that can be used inside of C line. And then you can just open this project and continue typing the B code comments in the terminal. We are actually thinking about uh, maybe providing some UI interface for B code comments and we're collaborating with the guys from the B code. So uh, we're still considering this. It's still not on the top of the roadmap, but it's uh, not so far. <laughs> so because, uh, yeah, the tool is quite nice. So I was quite impressed while installed the boost library like in two comments. It was like, wow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, question regarding uh, IE. Uh, so is, are there plans to integrate profiling, memory leak testing? Of course, there are some plans, <laughs> you know. Uh, we have quite a lot of plans, but they are not quite realistic for the, uh, like maybe for one or two years from now. Uh, so we would like to make a very, uh, like a big <coughs> bunch of tools integrated into C line to build a complete environment for the C developers. Because yeah, but. Yeah, we have like, you know, a lot of interesting requests for building the environment. We have the request from the Arduino community who were like asking us for some support. They already built a project with CMake and used it in C line and they're pretty happy, but they're still asking about some things. We have a lot of things uh, concerning the embedded development programs, uh, programmers because they are asking for some uh, cross compilation in the places where it's not working smoothly for them because right now it's working, but only in case all the cross compilers are GCC based based because we are like using the output from the compiler. Uh, so we need to maybe enlarge this uh, basic tool set to support uh, like big areas like embedded development, like Arduino maybe, or maybe something more. So we have quite a lot of tools in mind. We have the Valgrin feature request in our tracker. And like for me as a C++ developer, I can't just imagine how I can develop without the Valgrin. Maybe I'm that bad in memory management, but I can just can't do it without it. So uh, I like uh, upvoting this request by myself. <laughs> Yeah, so the plans are quite big, but we just started in April. <laughs> How many developers were uh, actually? Right it's, now? Uh, I believe, 10 developers or something like that. Because, you know, we actually split the AppCode and CLIN teams into parts, but still there are a big interaction because we're still sharing some experience. And uh, so it should be something about 10 developers, uh, one key engineer, one support engineer, so four and one technical writer. Yeah, and me. <laughs> yeah. Any more questions? Okay, so thank you. Thank you for